Apple is making another major shift toward independence by introducing its own Wi-Fi chip in the iPhone 17. Analyst Ming-Chi Kuo reports that Apple is moving away from Broadcom's chips, aiming to optimize connectivity within its ecosystem. This change could improve speed, reduce latency, and lower production costs in the long run. For years, Apple has relied on Broadcom's chips for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but recent reports suggest that the company wants full control over its wireless technology. Kuo previously predicted that Apple would switch to in-house Wi-Fi chips within three years, and with the iPhone 17, that plan seems to be taking shape. By designing its own chip, Apple can ensure better hardware and software integration, leading to more efficient performance, better energy management, and reduced reliance on external suppliers. One of the key factors in this transition is support for Wi-Fi 7. While the iPhone 16 already supports Wi-Fi 7 using Broadcom's technology, Apple's custom chip could take full advantage of this standard. Wi-Fi 7 promises significant improvements, including speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second, lower latency for gaming and video calls, and dynamic frequency switching between 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz bands for a more stable connection. If Apple's in-house chip is fine-tuned for Wi-Fi 7, the iPhone 17 could deliver an even smoother and faster wireless experience. There is still some uncertainty about whether all iPhone 17 models will receive this new chip. Analyst Jeff Pugh originally suggested that only the Pro models would have it, but Kuo now believes that Apple will roll out its in-house Wi-Fi chip across all four models. If true, this would be a major shift, as Apple usually reserves advanced connectivity features for its high-end devices. However, Apple's broader strategy seems to involve making its core technologies standard across all models, ensuring consistency and better performance. Another long-term goal for Apple could be combining Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cellular technology into a single chip. The company has already taken steps in this direction with the iPhone 16e, which introduced the C1 modem, Apple's first in-house cellular chip. If Apple eventually merges all wireless technologies into a single component, it could lead to even greater efficiency. A unified chip would improve power consumption, boost connection stability, and cut production costs by eliminating the need for separate modules. Whether this innovation will debut with the iPhone 17 or come in later generations remains to be seen. By developing its own Wi-Fi chip, Apple is not only improving wireless performance but also strengthening its position in the market. Moving away from third-party suppliers like Broadcom allows Apple to have full control over its hardware and software. This approach has already proven successful with Apple's custom silicon, such as the A-Series and M-Series chips, which offer industry-leading performance and efficiency. The potential benefits of this change are clear. Users can expect faster connections, better stability, and possibly even longer battery life thanks to improved energy management. However, there are also challenges. Transitioning to a new in-house chip means Apple must handle any issues that arise without relying on Broadcom's years of experience in wireless technology. The iPhone 16 is here, bringing a unique mix of old and new. It looks like the iPhone 14, but comes with the A18 chip, giving it the power and Apple intelligence features of the iPhone 16. This is a big deal because previous models, including the iPhone 14 and some versions of the iPhone 15, lacked AI support. With this move, Apple seems to be making sure all its new iPhones are AI ready, which could mean the iPhone 15 won't be around much longer. Many expected the iPhone 16e to be a budget-friendly option, but its starting price of $600 is higher than anticipated. The 256GB model costs $700, while the 512GB version jumps to $900. Apple also discontinued the iPhone 14 and iPhone Southeast, leaving no truly low-cost iPhone in the lineup. The removal of the iPhone 14 makes sense since it used the older Lightning port, which no longer meets European regulations, the iPhone 14 Plus, the most affordable large-screen iPhone, is also gone. One of the biggest surprises with the iPhone 16e is its impressive battery life. It now holds the record for the longest battery life on a 6.1-inch iPhone. Apple claims it lasts up to 26 hours of offline video playback, nearly a 20% improvement over the iPhone 15. It also offers 90 hours of audio playback, a 12% increase. This is a major upgrade, especially for those coming from older models like the iPhone 12 or iPhone 12 mini. The iPhone 16e only has a single rear camera, which might seem like a drawback. However, if it's the same 48 megapixel sensor found in the iPhone 15 and 16, it should still deliver high quality photos. The sensor cropping feature improves zoom quality, making 2x zoom portraits possible. Apple's strong reputation for video quality suggests that this camera setup should be good enough for most users. One notable addition is the action button, a feature many users appreciate. 
However, it lacks the camera control button found on more expensive iPhone 6D models. Some may prefer this simpler design as the extra button isn't essential for everyone. Despite being cheaper than the iPhone 15, the iPhone 16e offers key advantages, including the faster A18 chip, 8 gigabytes of RAM, Apple intelligence support, and longer battery life. These factors make it a compelling option. However, the biggest drawback is the lack of MagSafe. Apple removed the built-in magnets, meaning users can attach MagSafe chargers, stands, or wallets. Wireless charging is still available, but it's limited to a slow 7.5 watt speed with standard key light chargers. Another missing feature is the dynamic island, as the iPhone 16 e sticks with the older notch design. While some may not mind this change, others who are used to the dynamic island might find it disappointing. The display also has a lower brightness level, maxing out at 1200 nits compared to the 1600 nits found on the iPhone 15 and 16. While the 18 chip is a great addition, the iPhone 16e has a slight limitation compared to the iPhone 16. Is Apple finally giving us a budget iPhone that doesn't feel outdated? After a long wait, the iPhone 16e is officially here, replacing the SE series with some unexpected upgrades, but does it really stand a chance against the competition? Apple has taken three years to release a follow-up to the iPhone SE, which last launched in 2022. This time, they've made some major changes. The iPhone 16e now features a 6.1-inch OLED display, meaning Apple has officially moved all its devices away from LCD screens. However, it still has a 60 Hz refresh rate, which might feel outdated, especially when most mid-range Android devices offer at least 90 Hz or higher. Design-wise, the phone looks much more like Apple's flagship models, closely resembling the iPhone 14. The home button is gone, replaced with Face ID, and Apple has swapped out the ring slash silent switch for the new action button. First introduced with the iPhone 15 Pro series, the aluminum frame and ceramic shield glass give it a more premium feel compared to previous budget models. When it comes to cameras, Apple has made a noticeable change. The iPhone 16 e features a single 48 megapixel rear camera with a built-in 2x telephoto zoom. This means you can get better optical zoom without sacrificing image quality. On the front, there's a 12 megapixel camera for selfies and video calls. While the camera setup is a clear upgrade from the SE models, it's still a step below Apple's flagship devices. The SE series has never been known for top-tier cameras, and Apple has focused more on other features this time around. That being said, for everyday users who are chasing pro-level photography, cameras should be more than capable. Battery life is another area where Apple has improved things significantly. While they haven't confirmed the exact battery size, leaks suggest it's around 3279 million per hours. Apple claims this is the longest battery life ever on a 6.1-inch iPhone, lasting 6 hours longer than the iPhone 11 and 12 hours longer than any previous SE model. Charging speeds are fairly standard for Apple's non-pro models, with up to 20 watts when using a wired USB-C connection and up to 15 watts wirelessly. While this is a good improvement, some competitors offer much faster charging speeds at similar price points. One of the biggest selling points of the iPhone 16e is its AI capabilities. Apple has equipped it with the A18 chipset, the same processor found in the base iPhone 16 model. It comes with 8 GB of RAM and offers storage options of 128, 256, or 512 GB. With these upgrades, Apple Intelligence is a major highlight bringing AI-powered features that make the phone smarter and more useful in daily life. Siri is now more conversational and capable of handling complex tasks. Safari has a new intelligent search function that highlights key topics and summarizes web pages. The Mail app offers smart replies, helping users respond faster with context-aware suggestions. Messages have also received an AI boost, making chats smoother and more intuitive. There's even a new Photos feature that allows users to remove unwanted objects from images with precision.